Happy Valentine's Day, all you little monsters. This little monster girl, Desi, coming at ya. And today I got a brand new story time for you guys, so I hope you guys have better love lives than my dad, because today I'll be talking about one of his crazy exes. Because I'm a YouTuber, and I don't have a life. So, let's get on to the story. For the sake of this story, we're going to call this ex K. And to start with, Kay was actually a young person. She was only, I'd say about four years older than I am, which makes her more than half my dad's age. Don't judge my dad though, he tends to just get into relationships, and I didn't really see a problem with it considering they were both adults. But I definitely knew that I couldn't really call this person mom in the future. Still, we got along pretty well. No, that's always how it starts out, especially when it comes to a relationship between my parents and somebody else. A bit of context on my dad's side. My dad's a really nice person. He tries to keep that he's always tried to keep me and my brothers smiling. And he's taken good care of us, but of course he does want to get a girlfriend too, so and he can't really control whether or not he accidentally picks up a crazy person. And that's pretty much how this started. Obviously, there weren't any signs at the beginning. She did have a bit of trouble in her past, which probably was the cause of how crazy she went. Though it doesn't completely excuse a lot of what she did. Kay and my dad were together for about, I'd say, five years. And the first few years were a lot of fun. She was easy to get along with, and she really liked my art. She was pretty encouraging too, but I guess that's because she was around my age range. Still, she seemed to make my dad happy at the time, and that made me happy for them. But as time continued on, obviously problems started to arise. The first thing to note was that Kay was an alcoholic, among other things. Eventually, her and my dad started to get into small fights. Sometimes it was over nothing, and sometimes it wasn't. And sometimes it was just shouting matches with each other. And that much I could deal with, but eventually, hearing them shout at each other almost every other night did take a toll on me to the point where I had trouble sleeping at night. I don't really like yelling. I don't like loud things, and I don't like loud places. And eventually, the fights just got worse and worse. Eventually, it even got to the point where I had to call my older sister to come and get me because I just couldn't stand it. But at the time, I didn't really speak up about it. I knew that my dad and her weren't going to be able to fix things, but I just didn't feel like it was my place to say anything. Now, my dad is a good person, but he does tend to get a little bit... I don't really know the word for it, but I guess one way is both intense and always feeling like he's in the right, at least when he's drunk. This might also partially play into how everything went down, but as far as I could tell, Kay was definitely the aggravator. She was always starting the fights, and my dad honestly did try his best not to get physical with her. That isn't me trying to protect him. He honestly tried his best not to lay a hand on her because she was so small and skinny and he was so much bigger than her. But she was the type of person that would just keep pushing and pushing and pushing no matter how much somebody tried to avoid it. Honestly, my dad always tried to go into different rooms and walk away to give them both a chance to cool down. But she would just follow after him, shouting at him, insulting him, and just saying a bunch of crap. A few times, I got in the middle of them whenever it seemed like they were about to get physical with each other. She never put a hand on me, and my dad never put a hand on me either. So I knew getting in the middle of them would actually turn out better. As much as I hated the shouting, I hated the fact that my dad would get blamed if she got hurt. 
My dad has had a record, so I knew he would, in fact, get in trouble. Even if it only meant he was spending a night in the cell. I didn't like the idea of that. And fights just kept on getting worse and worse from there. A few times when I wasn't there to get in the middle of it, my dad would end up pushing her whenever she would just keep on trying to hit him or trying to push him or just flat out getting physical with him. He would sometimes push her away and he would accidentally push too hard. And a few times she got hurt. And of course from everybody else's point of view was that my dad was too rough with her. I mean, she was a skinny person. How much damage she, could she possibly do? And honestly, you'd be surprised. When a person is drunk and high on adrenaline, they'll do just about anything. Eventually, my dad did kick her out. But a few months later, she ended up coming back. But when she came back, she was caught on something worse than just alcohol. And my dad took her back because he wanted to help her. He honestly did because he had been around stuff like that for a long time and knew how much it could damage a person. I knew it too, but it made it harder to go back over to his house to hang out. As long as she was there, I knew that there was going to be a fight eventually. And needless to say, there was. She had gotten hooked on some pretty bad drugs and they actually ended up melting her brain. And it came to the point where she developed PTSD and schizophrenia. And her schizophrenia made it seem like we were all out to get her. She ended up damaging both the oven as well as an expensive computer that my dad had bought. And after that, my dad finally kicked her out for good. But that's not where the story ends. She had ended up doing something even more terrible than just breaking our stuff. One day, she had snuck it back into the apartment, and she stole some pretty valuable jewelry from my grandma's jewelry box. My grandma Margaret, as you guys know, passed away recently. And the jewelry that Kay had taken was jewelry that she was going to leave me. It wasn't just some fancy trinkets either. You see, my grandma had gone overseas a lot of times in her youth and brought back some pretty good treasures, all of which she used to tell me about any time she would open up her jewelry box and let me play with what was inside. And it wasn't just that Kay had taken them either. Kay had stolen them, and then somebody stole them from her which means we had no way of getting them back. Kay had done a lot of bad stuff while she was with us. She had gotten my dad in trouble a lot, she had broken a lot of things, and she blamed him for every single one of them, even though that she was the one that was doing all the pushing. And now, because of her, all the treasures that my grandma had collected while she was overseas doing her nurse work, were gone. And she is by far the craziest person my dad had ever led into his life while I was around. Did you guys enjoy the video? If you liked it, please like, share, or subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have your own Valentine's Day story, leave it in a comment down below. To be honest, I wasn't sure what to do for Valentine's Day since I only had one boyfriend in middle school. And as far as I know, he's not a crazy person like this batshit crazy lady. And while I did consider doing a creepy pasta, I thought you guys might enjoy this story too. That being said, I'll probably do another creepy pasta since you guys seem to enjoy the last one. Though I do have two other videos planned. Hopefully I'll be able to get them all posted in time. Obviously, they won't all make it by Valentine's Day, but hopefully I can get them done before the month is over. Though, putting that aside, after my last video, I got a few questions on Amino. And since they're all the same, I'll just answer them as simply as I can. And the question is, how do I do art so well? And the answer to that, even though that I'm not completely happy with my art style yet, 
is eyeballing detail and using a lot of references. Using references and eyeballing detail can be a great help, though it's important not to get too discouraged if you don't get it right the first time. Practice does make perfect, after all. And because of the references that I've used so far, I've managed to make it as far as I have. And though I still have a long way to go, I'm not giving up anytime soon. And with all that said and done, I'll see all of you jelly beans in the next video. Bye!